So you've probably heard of DeepSeek uh, and it's taking over the internet right now because it's a free alternative to ChatGPT, Claude or Perplexity, for example. And so I wanted to make a quick video just to show you guys how to use DeepSeek. So in order to access DeepSeek, you want to go to deepseek.com. When you go there, the website looks like this. You would click here to access the desktop version. And then if you click here, that takes you to the app. You can also find it on the app store. Now underneath that, you have a little bit of comparison benchmarks of how DeepSeek performs as opposed to some of the popular models out there like Llama, Claude, GPT, and stuff like that. So uh, feel free to check this out if you're interested in understanding how this is better than the other models. But nevertheless, the best part is it's free to use. You don't have to pay anything whether you're using the desktop or the uh, mobile app version. So uh, might as well just try it. Once you click here, for me, I'm already logged in, but it would be prompted to log in. You can create an account as well. Uh, you can create your account with email and password or just use your Google login. Once you're on the main page, the layout is very similar to ChatGPT. On the left, you have all your chats. You can start a new chat by clicking here. You can collapse the sidebar by clicking here and then again, bring it out. Now, when the first time you log in, you will be able to just use it. This is their latest R1 model that they have released, which basically thinks to a problem. I'll show that to you in a bit. This is where you would access web search if that's necessary for the type of question that you're asking. And this one lets you upload documents. As you can see right now, it says text extraction only. So essentially whatever you upload, it's going to extract the text and use that as additional context for the prompt that you'd be using. Now, just like ChatGPT, you can go ahead and ask it any questions you have. For example, I'm asking, what is a cryptocurrency? So as you can see, uh, just like ChatGPT, it's pretty comprehensive. It gives you all the details here. Now, say for example, I wanna use web search. So I'm asking what's today's weather in New York and I would turn the web search on. So it's very straightforward. If you turn the web search on, it's going to search the web. Like for example, it will give you this part where it tells you what it essentially looked at. Now, obviously, this is an overkill for searching the weather. However, this is just to show that the uh, model does not shy away from looking everywhere possible in order to get you the latest and greatest information on whatever you're looking for. Now, one of the things that I use these kind of models for when it comes to using web search is just look up news, uh, especially AI and tech news. So I'm just going to do a quick search here. As you can see, it did a very comprehensive job at it. It figured out exactly like all of these things I covered in the last few videos, like Trump's 500 billion target AI infrastructure plan. So DeepSeek's hour model happened to came out in the last few days. So that is also picked up here. Then there's a few other AI news as well. So as you can see, this is where finding 50 results would actually be useful. So this is a more ideal web search use case. Now I use these models a lot when it comes to coding as well. And that's where the DeepThink R1 model comes in. So for example, I'm asking it, how do I build a chat app in React with the backend and database being in Superbase? Now what you will see is as soon as I click the send button, it's going to start thinking about the problem before it spits out an output. And that's uh, very crucial when it comes to breaking down questions like this, where you have a complex query where I'm asking it that I'm going to build a chat app. So he has to consider the need of the user is a chat app. He wants to build it in React, and then he wants to have the backend and database integration done through Superbase. So it needs to think through all those problems, then use the web search to look into those documentation to find the latest and greatest information on how those integrations are going to be done. So you will see how that happens. So just like I was telling you, it basically took in the prompt and then really broke it down. It said that first I should outline the main components that are required. React for the front end, obviously, then Superbase handles the back end, including authentication, real-time database, possibly storage. So it takes into account all of the things that would be necessary for a backend integration and not just whatever I asked in my one line of prompt, right? So it talks about the real-time functionality. And then it also thinks about the UI that it's going to have a message list, input field, send button, right? Uh, maybe some kind of state management to store the messages in the user sessions and stuff like that. Finally, we'll need to test the app, then to run it, sign up, log in, all of that. So it takes all of these things into consideration, does the thinking part of it really well, so that it can build the output that covers end-to-end -end anything that I would need to know. 
at least from the first prompt point of view. And then I, I can obviously re-prompt it or ask follow-up questions as needed to get more of the answers. So based on that, it, it talks about setting up the Superbase, setting up the React project, uh, initializing both the coins. Again, if you're not into coding after installation of the necessary dependencies, you're just building the actual application. It gives me a little bit of the code on what I need to build and how I need to configure it. And that's pretty much it. Now on this one, it didn't search the web because if it did, it would show up here. And that's another good thing that you can see if it's searching the web. But the good news is in ChatGPT, you can with their O1 model, which is essentially the same as the R1 model, which is a reasoning and thinking model, you cannot use web search in concurrency. But with this one, you can use both the thinking model and web search as well. So just to demonstrate that, I will use this where I'm asking it to search the latest Superbase doc and to make sure the information is up to date. So as you can see, it did search the web first and then thought for 13 seconds to now build the output. I really like how consistent this model is. The fact that it's open source, that you can download it and use it for free forever. The fact that they make their latest and greatest models completely available and the fact that their web search is also a free to use. And with all of those features, you could technically use this model, replace ChatGPT, Claude, Perplexity, and all of them. It's extremely good at coding. It's good at searching the web. It's good at thinking through problems and giving you outputs. So I feel like this is a really, really good model that everybody that wants to use AI should start taking advantage of. Lastly, I just wanted to show you that you have your profile here from where you can access your settings. You can delete all chats. You can contact them or log out. Pretty self-explanatory. I really like how clean this app is that you just go in, you use it for whatever purpose you need it, and that's pretty much it. Now, I don't think DeepSeek currently has any support for memory. So if you have a ChatGPT Pro account, it has like a long-term memory where it remembers things that you had asked it multiple times through the various different chats. I don't think DeepSeek right now has that, but for what it offers as a free product, I think it's more than enough for most people. I hope this video was useful. So I would really appreciate if you liked the video and subscribe and share it with others if you think this is going to be helpful to them as well. Thank you for watching. I'll see you on the next one.